What's up, everyone? On today's episode, we are talking all about the book Start With Why by Simon Sinek. So we're going to walk through our thoughts on the book, kind of recap it all and talk about how it's applicable to the contracting business as a whole, uh, because I would say about half the people that read this book hated it. Welcome back to Contractor Growth Network. I'm Logan. And I'm Alex. And today we are talking all about the book Start With Why by Simon Sinek. Now, Simon Sinek has a very famous TED Talk, which mm -hmm. is the Golden Circle Talk. It was shot yeah, a long time, like, I guess probably a long time ago. Mm -hmm. I think it was like 2005, as I think, because I think it came out before the book. Um, and it's it's all about Apple, which this book, again, is all about <laughs> Apple. <laughs> so we're going to talk all about this stuff today and, and why we chose this book, what this book did for me, what this book did for Alex, and then kind of what we're seeing out there for the contracting world. So let me just start off by saying the whole idea with why is this is like, it's a tougher thing to come up with the mm -hmm. idea of why. However, most people are really driven and they do a lot for their business and their families and this and that, but they don't know why they're doing it. Or if they do know why they're doing it, they're unable to communicate that to the public. And when you cannot communicate your why or your mission and all this, it's tough to get people on board because otherwise they just think that you're a commodity, you're one of everybody else. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of what I gained from this book from a holistic standpoint is if you don't, if you can't communicate why you're doing what you're doing, um, then how was anybody else expected to jump on the Logan bandwagon and go, oh, wow, he's my guy because of X, Y, and Z. Otherwise, I'm just a guy with a bunch of features or nice to haves instead of like a movement. Mm -hmm. So for you, with all that being said, what did you think of the book? I thought it was it was interesting. You know, you, I, you said before that not a lot of people liked it. I liked it because I never thought of it in that, you know, simplistic way. Like start with why. Like I always figure like why are you gonna do this? Why are you gonna do that? And that would kind of drive you to be like, that's why I'm gonna do it. But to actually like from a big company like Apple have every single one of his employees know why he does it or and that gets like passed down through the entire company is like it's kind of amazing to think about that that's how it could be successful because he knew his why and everybody knew knew why they were doing this. And that's the coolest part because he knew it. But everybody else did too. Yeah. And I thought as a, as a whole, and, and we'll touch on this, I thought the – actually, you know, we'll just lead off with this. This is something that, that uh, Reber told me five or six years ago about marketing. He said, Logan, if you can make – if you can market a business to make it so awesome that not only do your clients want to hire you, they also want to work for you, that's when you know you made it. Mm -hmm. And that's something that, they, that Simon Sinek talks about with this with Apple where he said at the end of the book, but he said – People that love Apple, it's you're the same person whether you are a consumer or you work for them. It's just how you like worship them in essence. Where I mean, we both have iPhones, we both work on Macs. Um, I mean, I have AirPods, so it's I just wanted to stunt that I got the money. Yeah, uh, <laughs> so, but like we both like use the products a lot, and then you look at like the actual like, genius people. Mm -hmm. They are diehard Apple people. They're not just like yeah, I guess I'll just get this as a side job. Like they truly love the product of Apple. Mm -hmm. So it's the idea that the movement is not just for consumers. The employees like drink the Kool-Aid too. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was the coolest thing of all this. Where I'm like, oh, damn, this really is a movement. It's not yeah. just a place to work. It's not just a thing you have in your pocket. It really is like they're on a mission. They, they made the lowercase i like cool. And right. it, when he said it like that towards the end of the book, and I'm like, he's right because – you want an iPhone, you want an iPod. If like Android comes out with a phone, it's just a phone. Right. But it's the iPhone. It's the most simplistic name you could think of. He just put a letter in front of the word phone and now it's a it's a phenomena. It is. And it's 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 crazy that that could all stem from one man, one man knows the why and all thousands of his employees now know it. And the coolest part about him I thought was so I watched the I just randomly turned on the Steve Jobs movie. Mhm. Mm and and I know we're getting off topic of the why, mm -hmm. but he didn't even know how to code. He didn't yeah. know how to build a computer. He just knew humans. Mm -hmm. He just said, okay, like we're going to make a closed system or we're going to create a computer with only two ports. Mm -hmm. And 
Wozniak, the brains behind it, all the engineers said, no, like back in the day, because computers were unbelievably customizable. Mm -hmm. He said, no, like we have to make this customizable because that's what people want. He said, they don't know what they want. I'm going to give them what they want. Mm -hmm. And then now you look at iPhone versus Android. iPhone, you have to jailbreak it, which was a thing like 10 years ago to install like other apps or or do other stuff on. Mm -hmm. While Android, it like comes, like you can customize it. Yeah. But Apple works with everything. And like you see the difference of Apple versus Android. Mm -hmm. When we run ads, running ads to iPhone users versus Android users, it's a different end user. Yeah. iPhone people want stuff that's easy. They know it's going to work and they're set up. Like Mm -hmm. they make everything so simple and it's unbelievable how well it's done. Yeah. Well, it's like when you say that Steve Jobs didn't know how to code in the book, the, probably the biggest thing I got, the biggest example that really hit me was he used it with Microsoft, but I'll use it for Apple right now. It's Jobs, he was the why guy, mm-hmm. and, and Waz was the how guy. Mm-hmm. And the why guy can't succeed without the how guy, and the how guy needs the why guy to succeed. Right. And it's like he used the example with Steve Ballmer from Microsoft. And if you ever watched his, like, uh, I don't know if they were releasing a product or something like that. but it was the launch? Those, yeah, launch. Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen super it. Yeah. animated, like, yeah. And it was like, and, um, like, Energy brings motivation, but um, it was this quote. But Bill Gates has like that charisma that inspires, right? And it was like that's perfect because they're the exact opposite people. But Steve Ballmer works really good with Bill Gates because Steve Ballmer can get in front of more people and motivate them to work harder. But Bill Gates has the why, and when he gets up there, people listen because he created it. Yeah, it, it's it's a cool dynamic between the two. Yeah. So with with all of this, I would say like in this book club that we got, it's small, and half the people in the book in the Facebook group were like, "Yeah, I'm struggling through this book. Don't like it. Um, it's just tough because they're like Logan, like your podcast is actionable, mm-hmm. and the the tactics and strategies like we can implement today. This is not something that we can totally just sit down and implement today. Mm-hmm. And the way that I look at that is without a why you're paddling a boat and you know you're going fast as shit but you don't know what direction the boat's going because you don't know where you're going Mm -hmm. and you take your energy and imagine like you're you're a circle and you've got your energy is coming out of every single you know degree so it's like it's shooting all over it looks almost like how you would draw a sun and that's how most small business owners operate, where they put their energy into every little thing here and there that they can. Tactic, mm-hmm. tactic, 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 tactic. And then the people like what Simon Sinek is talking about is when you know your why, you put all your energy into literally one direction. Mm-hmm. So instead of putting it into 360 different directions, you're putting it into one direction. And if you add up all that energy, you're going to go way further than if you were to put it in every direction. So that's that's really what I gained out of this. Mm-hmm. Is it's it's really more so when you can understand why you're doing what you're doing, well now you have a path. And then you can take all these strategies and tactics that we talk about on this podcast, all the promotions and how to build a website and why doing video marketing. Otherwise all you're doing is you're just spraying from the hip yeah. the whole time because you have no idea where you're going and all your employees are just along for the ride. Versus if you know your why, you know why you're doing what you're doing, well, now you take all this time and energy and all these tactics and you apply them to your why, you're golden. Mm-hmm. It's like uh, when you don't know your why, it's a little more chaotic. It's, your business, um, it's your structure. It's a lot more chaotic. No organization. You can tell. And I think why people – I could tell. I, during Sometimes during the book, I'm like, wow, he's this just keeps hammering home the point of start with your why, but I'm not getting like an actionable right. response. But I really felt like the Southwest Airlines example mm-hmm. was the most – I guess not relatable, but the most I could comprehend it the best. The Apple, I get it and I can understand it and the Microsoft, but they're such large companies now. It's tough. It's tough to do that. But Southwest Airlines, if you've ever flown on any airline, you know Southwest is probably one of the better ones if you've flown on Southwest. And I fly American now and it's it's okay. But I'm interested because there's so many airlines and you're just sitting there waiting for the plane. You're like, what? why am I taking this? They're all the same to me. Right. But then when he breaks it down and says, no, Southwest – they just took what Pacific Southwest did and made it better and made mm-hmm. it more fun. And I'm like, because the, well, I forget his name now, but the, the Kelleher, Kelleher. Yeah. Yeah. He was like, um, no, I'm just going to make it fun and make it better. Cause he knew his why from the beginning. And I thought it was interesting when he starts getting into the Walmart examples where like, once these guys leave the company and even Steve jobs, 
the why goes with them. And, yeah. they, and if the guy, the next guy doesn't know how to do the why. Right. He just knows how to do the how. So I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting because with all this, this is whenever we build a website for a company, <clears throat> I said, okay, great. Let's talk about the about us. The about us section is important because you want to humans and, and especially homeowners like in the community that are hiring you as a contractor, they want to know why they should support you right now. If, if I'm talking to you and I'm going, okay, great. Why'd you start your business? You know, of all things, why remodeling? And they're just like, you know what, Logan, I gotta be honest, man. I love the money. The mm-hmm. money's great. And I'm just like, do you think anyone in your community is going to want to hire you because you just said the money's great? No. Nope. No. Now I go, okay, great. Now let's talk about that. You could be making money any like you could literally go into like being a stockbroker. Why remodeling? And and as we play this game, we go deeper and deeper and deeper and eventually we find out that they love working with their hands and they're just a creator at heart and they like working with clients and now we can sell that. Because that's the true emotion. But I think the problem with a lot of people that listen to this book said, I don't know how to find my why, or they don't go deep enough. Because for me personally, as I'm listening to this book, I thought I had my why, but now I realize I was like two layers too high. Mm-hmm. You know, like when I say layers, you get like this this game, not game. It's this thing that you call it seven layers of why. And you go, okay, like, you know, I really, I, want, I like marketing. Well, why do you like marketing? Well, I like marketing because I like the communication aspect of, you know, working with people. Well, why do you like that? Well, I like people because I'm a friendly person. Well, why are you a friendly person? Well, it's important, you know, so it's like you're, you're, you keep, it's like what little kids do to you when they're like three. Hey, why are you doing that? Uh, because I have to go to work. Well, why do you have to go to work, dad? Well, you know, I got to put money on the table. Well, why do you have to put, and eventually what you realize is that you're, you're going to work mm-hmm. because you love your, your daughter and you need to support them. But it's much easier to just think, well, I go to work to make money. Mm-hmm. That's not really the motivating factor because if you just wanted to make money, like that's not deep enough. But if you know you got to support your daughter, then you're going to go to work. Yeah. So that's kind of like what I gleaned from this is that unless you know how to properly do your why, um, which I'll like walk through that, how, how to do that actual exercise at the end of this podcast, mm-hmm. this book probably was like painful to go through. Yeah. Uh, and also I think uh, I think we're conditioned in life that everybody's destined for – their path or what they're going to do. Mm-hmm. And he mentioned in the book that some people are destined to be, you know, professional athletes or, you know, they're destined to, you know, be a contractor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then, yeah, I forget the guy's name, but he used an example where it was like Johnny, he knew that he was, he wasn't destined to do anything. Mm-hmm. He just knew he had to get a good job and he became an accountant. And then I think he bought some company. Oh, it was, uh, I want to say it was like Bridgeport Capital or something mm-hmm. like that. And it was, uh, and that was like kind of just like his way, and he just kept buying and buying because it was like he just knew that was kind of what he wanted to do, right. and that's kind of what he had to do. It wasn't destined to be anything. Well, this this, this whole like start with why. This is how Tony Robbins does all this stuff. I'm gonna say Tony Romo. Um, <laughs> Tony Robbins does all this stuff where what people think is when they go to Tony Robbins events, they think that he's gonna give them the secret sauce. He's gonna say, go out, meditate five times a day, and you're gonna feel better. But in reality, what he's doing is he reverses, he reverse engineers everything. And the way that the human brain works is that it's it first starts off with what is your true, it's called like your spiritual, it's like five rings, if you will. The first ring is like spirituality. Like what are your moral principles? What's your guiding values? Um, where do you really wanna go in life? Because if you know where you wanna go in life, everything else is easier. Mm-hmm. And then once you get up from there, then it goes into the um, volitional. It's a big ass word, which just uh, it's no, it goes rat. Uh, volitional is like the choices that you get to that you have at your fingertips. So if you know, oh, I got to go here, then it's like, okay, what options can I take to get there? And then once you get past that stage, and you go into rational, which is your way of going, okay, how do I actually like? How can I actually do each one of these things to get to this end goal? Mm-hmm. And then once you get past rational, then you go into emotional, meaning how do I feel about that at that specific direction? And then last is physical, means how do I actually do it physically? Mm-hmm. Most people think that, oh, if I lose weight, then I'll feel better about myself, which will give me more opportunity to do this. And then this happens, and then I'll be happy because I'll finally achieve fulfillment. But in reality, it starts with, okay, now I know where fulfillment is. Now let me reverse engineer how to get there. Okay. So that's kind of like, it's, it's also how the human brain works, mm-hmm. where most people think that what goes on around you in your environment 
dictates your thoughts, your feelings, your overall fulfillment in life. But in reality, it's the opposite. It goes like it starts with your brain and wherever your head takes you, that's what happens around you in the environment. Okay. You saying okay? Yeah, like I, I get I I lost you lost me at first and now I get it. That's well, I just I want to throw okay. some big ass terms like I know what I was saying. Yeah, like the word I'm like, where is he going with this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I, yeah, yeah. I so as I was reading this book, I always thought like your why is what gets you out of bed in the morning. Uh huh. But as I'm reading this more, it's like yes and no. I think what gets you out of bed in the morning is the surface level stuff like I want to make money, I need to make money, I need to put like food on the table. But like the why you actually do it is why you stick with that. Like, you know, you know what I mean. Like you get out of bed because you have to almost. Mm-hmm. It's just a normal, a normal thing. But why, like say if you hate your job for four years, why are you still at that job? It's like, well, because in two years I can get a promotion or mm-hmm. in three years I can retire. Or, you know, there's certain perks that where you're like, that's your motivating factor because you want to retire to spend time with your wife and kids. Like that's that's kind of what I feel like. Or am I looking way too deep into it, I think? No, I mean, so for me, like when I get up and work out in the morning, mm-hmm. um, I get up and I do it. Not because I'm like, oh, if I don't go right now, like, uh, you know, I'm not going to go later. It's because I know it's like my first domino. Because if I get up and I and I hit snooze or turn the, the my alarm off and I don't work out before work, I... You start the day 0-1. I start the day 0-1. And, and then I get into work and my routine's out of whack. So now my work day is all messed up because I either got too much sleep or like I'm a very routine person and one little thing that knocks me out, like... If I go home and have a glass of wine tonight, tomorrow's going to be all messed up, mm-hmm. which is stupid, you know, because like I'll be fine, but that's just how my, my brain is. So it throws everything off. So what I do is I get up and I go like every single morning, I don't wake up and go, oh my God, I cannot wait to work out today. <laughs> you get up and every day is a struggle, but I know that my, it's like the tipping point and everything else is going to suck. And then on top of that, my girlfriend is going to make fun of me and go, oh, did you work out today? Like, I saw you sleeping in when I went to the gym. And, I, and it's just it just spirals from there. Mm-hmm. So it's like I don't want to hear it from her because then it's like I'm humiliated that I, like, was weak enough to sleep in. So it – I mean, it, it all plays together. It all, at the end of the day, is like, you know, if you really, like, if you dig deep into why you're doing what you're doing, yeah. it makes it much easier. And then as far as, like, the hiring – side of things like when people want to hire you for a job if they know that let's say you're a landscaper and they know that you truly have a passion and a love for beautifying homes and you're active in the community and you're there to like help them with whatever they need because you love it that much because your whole you know you grew up and this and that and and your parents had a nice garden and that was like your escape growing up like you're way more likely if you can communicate that to let to people have people go oh wow yeah you are worth more money because i can truly see that this is your jam versus Mm -hmm. just like yeah you're just trying to sell me some stuff as a businessman okay yeah Uh, you see when your version is very interesting to me because you're a business owner and i'm not so i feel like my version of like understanding some things from the book at least or just in that is like I feel like I'm more surface level compared to like what you are because you're you dig deep because like you kind of have to you know what i mean that's why I keep saying. So, okay. so part of it is also is I've, when you're exposed to this stuff, this this whole notion of why are you doing what you're doing. The first time you do it, you can only go so deep. Mm-hmm. There's only a certain level that you're vulnerable to, and then what'll happen is over time, now that you're more cognizant of it and you start to become more aware of it, you can start to peel back the layers more and more and more and mm-hmm. more. Yeah. So when you first do it, it's like when people join Tom's contractor fight group, Tom says, own your crap, right? You need to come in, talk about what's wrong in your business. And a lot of times people, when they don't own it well enough, they go, yeah, I'm really bad at marketing. Own my, like, that's my, that's my owning my crap. And everybody jumps on them. I feel bad for the person. Cause I'm like, if this person didn't grow up in a, in a household where vulnerability is acceptable, they just don't know how to dig deep enough to realize that they're, insecurity leads to procrastination which leads to poor marketing Mm -hmm. it's not marketing it's the fact that you're insecure about putting yourself out there yeah so you procrastinate on that and in turn you never actually put anything out there marketing wise but unless you grew up in that or you know that or you're on this mission to find that it's tough Mm -hmm. and now that you've read this book you're gonna start to kind of peel back which is why yesterday when i go to this event and i come back today and i go all right guys i really thought about like the why of everything I, we created like there's new company values as of today, because mm-hmm. to me, I was like the ones that we had did not align with 
why I'm, you know, why I'm here and what I'm feeling and stuff like that. Yeah. And and I think the why changes because as you become more aware of it, it becomes easier to communicate. And once you can communicate that, then I'm like, okay, now I truly understand it for myself. And the company values will probably change in another two years because we'll go another couple layers deeper of why. And I'll be like, well, shit, now this, you know, this is truly what I mean when I say energy is infectious and mm-hmm. it just pivots from there. Yeah, that, that's like, even though I'm not a business owner, I still like, I woke up today like, hmm, what is my why mm-hmm. for why I want to be, you know, in media? Like, you know, that why right. why do I want to do this actually? Because, you know, you always kind of get it like, oh, what made you go to there? And I'm like, I always have like, oh, I don't know. I, it was challenging to me. And that's that's my go-to answer. But now I'm like, no, let's think a little deeper. And it's like that whole mindset of, mindset of just going deeper and deeper. Because mm-hmm. I think you're one of the only people in my life that actually like, digs deep for an answer and doesn't just go for surface level. Mm-hmm. And then I think I'm that person to other people, but not necessarily when I have to get that deep. So yeah, I'm just super interested in like your thought process of the whole book. Cause I thought I could take the example and can apply it to my own life. But at the same time, I'm like, I feel like I'm going to surface level. I feel like I have to get a little deeper. And, and it's always going to feel like that. It's always going to feel super surface level. Mm-hmm. Um, and the whole reason for that is because they, because like, what Simon saying talks about in the book is that your, it, it's your why and all this stuff. Like it's all in the limbic system and limbic part of your brain, which is where your, your motivation and your emotions are. Mm-hmm. So he talks about as a good example in the book is describe love. Wow. That's yeah. And it's like, uh, <laughs> yeah. it's kind of the same thing. It's like, okay, what does chicken taste like? And you're like, uh, I don't, it just tastes like Good. chicken. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, like there's no way to describe some of this stuff. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of like with this why is it's why it's, it's difficult to communicate that. However, once you can figure this thing out, you know, you no longer have to worry about the competition. You no yeah. longer have to deal with, um, what other people, I mean, you should know what your competitors are doing, but you don't have to go, Oh, what, how much they're, Oh, they're 2000 bucks. I'll be at, at 1950 because we're going to undercut them. But if you have a strong why and, and people believe in your why, mm-hmm. then you're good. Yeah. So like, for example, like one of our um, new values is speed over perfection, which from an outside standpoint, you're like, oh shit, that company's probably gonna be sloppy work. Mm-hmm. That's what that means. But then when you actually think about like the why behind it, like if I go look, we're not perfectionists. No, like we, we can't get, per- like perfection is impossible. Mm-hmm. However, we can be quick because in business, all you got to be is 80% good. Like if you are always striving for everything is perfect, then you're never going to get anywhere because you're going to procrastinate and you're going to hide behind your product and go, oh, I'm not going to release it until it's perfect, which so many people do. Mm-hmm. But you just need a bat. So you just need to start putting stuff out there. So with speed over perfection, if somebody comes to me and goes, well, like this, this has to be perfect. Otherwise, I'm not working with you. That's just not somebody that we're in line with because mm-hmm. we're never going to be perfect. We're never going to live up to their expectations. But if somebody goes, look, man, I'm cool with it not being, you know, perfect. It has to be good, which like obviously is like what we want. We want quality, but yeah. I would much rather get something out there faster because that's the way that the world's going. Mm-hmm. Amazon is not perfect, no, but Amazon is fast. Yes. And they know how if there's an issue with packaging or whatever, they can fix it. You call them up and they go, yep, we got you taken care of. And that's kind of like the mindset that I have with all this but they're not perfect. Yeah. Well, I, I also think perfection is something that hides insecurity. It is. It is. 100%. So, so it makes sense because, like you said, nothing's perfect. And people that are perfectionists, like I watch videos on people that have started um, like YouTube channels. Mm-hmm. And they're like, what's like one of their biggest mistakes is taking months and a years to put out their first video because they they're want so to scared. make it perfect. And then he goes, and, and one guy was like, I just reach out the whole video and i think of that at all the time when i'm editing you know other contractors videos i'm like this is perfect because it's mm-hmm. not it's perfect because it's not perfect because they're it's, just giving it the footage and they're and contractors yeah exactly it's exactly what you want to see but and yeah. you see because like when you can go look this is like i want as a contractor i want to educate my community because i've seen so many people get ripped off by you know flying by the seat of their pants, roofers, they come in after a storm, this and that. But if I can educate my community, the next time a storm happens, I don't want somebody, in my, I don't want my neighbor to come back to me and go, hey, we got ripped off by somebody. And now my kids can't go to college because we put $50,000 into the roof mm-hmm. or whatever it is. Um, that'd be a hell of a roof, but either way. Um, <laughs> it diamonds you, on the roof. Yeah. <laughs> so 
it, it's it's but when you can get that out there and you can show that and that's why like, education is so big in marketing because if you can put all that out there like it shows that like you truly want to educate people mm-hmm. and people can build rapport with that and they trust you more so because of that but all you're doing is you're just being a good citizen and helping people out so they're more likely to in turn pay you because mm-hmm. at the end of this like it's still a business, but if you can give, it's like why Gary Vaynerchuk's so big. I'm like, he's like, look, I know if I just keep give, 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 it'll come back. You know, yes, you still have to sell. So I like, you know, give, give, then ask, give, give, then ask versus just always give. Um, but at the end of it all, I mean, it's like, if you can truly say, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing, you're going to be way better off. It exudes confidence too. Yeah. That's, uh, that's another thing I got from him using like Steve Jobs and Apple because I, I had background knowledge previous going in that I knew Steve Jobs wasn't a coder. Mm-hmm. He was just kind of like the talking head sure. almost. And uh, But he had that confidence that made you believe that he can code and right. he could make this no matter who's working for his company. But that's because he knew the why. Mm-hmm. So, and, and we've worked with people before, clients before, that we end up uh, parting ways because stuff has to be perfect for them. And it just... It's just stuff that I'm like, yeah. hey, look, it's it's not going to be perfect. Something's going on. Like, we're not the company for you. So it happens. But with everything, I mean, you just got to get stuff good good enough because speed is the name of the game. Yeah. And as long as you can, like, pr- properly portray, hey, here's why we're, speed's big. Because if it wasn't for speed, then this wouldn't happen and that wouldn't happen. Then it comes across as, oh, you just want to be sloppy. But, like, if you can properly, like, communicate why you're doing what you're doing – it makes everything run smoother. Mm-hmm. It is a difference between quality and perfection too. Yeah. Like sloppy quality, perfection. Like you could still be quality and fast. Right. Without being completely perfect. Right. You know? So. So okay. So with this, so the the seven layers of why. So the seven layers of why are when you start with something to continue to ask why and go deeper and deeper and deeper until you can't do it anymore. And if you have somebody do this for you, they have to kind of know what they're doing. Which I'm gonna try it. Uh, I've done it a couple times and it never works with Audrey because she always like stumps me. Mm -hmm. But if you also write this stuff out, it makes it easier. So if you go like for you, Alex, okay. Why do you do video editing? Because it's challenging. Okay. Why is being challenged important to you? Uh, Because it, I feel like I gain more knowledge when I'm being challenged. Okay. Why is gaining knowledge something that you seek out? Um, Just because... I always want to be the dumbest person in the smartest room. So to continue to get smarter in that room means I'm moving up and upwards if you have to change rooms. You know what I mean? Sure. So why is being in a bigger or smarter room something that's important to you? Um, that's a good question. I think... Uh, I think because I just was never the smartest kid in school. I kind of want to prove to myself that I am a smart kid. It's just not, you know math problems that i'm good at you know what i mean so why is it important to you to to prove to yourself that you are not dumb um i just uh oh man this is tough i think i think i just want i I think because i know what i can reach and what i can do it's just i feel like i've always been given like a lazy approach i feel like at some things where i haven't applied myself to the fullest so mm-hmm. now in my adult section of life i really want to apply those s- skills that i should have been applying in school maybe a little bit more into my career and you know work in professional life i guess so why is it important that you apply this the stuff that you know you're capable of doing that in the past you didn't um i guess to make my family proud and like have reached that potential they think so highly of me Oh, cool. So that's seven. So we started off as why do you come into work as a videographer Mm -hmm. to deep down? It's I want my family to be proud of me and and know that I'm like doing what I can with life. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like how it would like cycle down is you start off and then now you realize because if you go, okay, great, Alex, if you lose this job deep down or you quit or whatever, seven layers down, you're subconsciously going to be worried about what's my family going to think of me now. Mm -hmm. So that's like with all this marketing stuff and all the content with business as a whole, if no, I mean, there are, everybody goes through times where they don't want to be on camera. They don't want to put out content. They don't want to sell. They don't want to wake up early. 
but if you know why you're doing what you're doing, it's way easier to, to go, you know what, this is why I'm doing this. Mm-hmm. And this is the same thing of, let's say people that want to lose weight. If you know why you want to lose weight, whether it's a health scare or you have a wedding coming up and you got to see your ex-boyfriend or ex-girlfriend and you're overweight, well, that's your why. That's your motivation. You will lose the weight. Mm-hmm. But if you go, Logan, I'll, you know, I want to, I want to lose ten pounds, and I'm like, okay, why? And you're like, eh, just, just want to feel a little bit better. It's not a shot in how you're losing any weight, mm-hmm. nope, at all. Gaining weight. You're gaining, yeah, exactly, because it's just a nice to have. But there is no why. Mm-hmm. Like there needs to be a motivating factor behind all this. So you put all your energy into this. And the same thing with the, um, how the human brain works with Tony Robbins. Like if you know where you're going then it's way easier to figure out all the different steps that you need to go through in your brain and then in your physical environments. Because if you know, you, you know, the only way for you to be happy in life is to, or you really want to be happy in life, and you know that losing weight is a path there, mm-hmm. you're not going to put yourself in an environment where you're always in candy stores and stuff. Like yeah. you're going to position yourself in proper ways instead of going, oh, well, like, you know, as long as I don't go to candy stores, I'll lose weight. Like, you know, you, you got to know where you're going. So that's mm-hmm. what I really liked about this book was just like, instead of trying all these little tactics, these like, you know, quick moves left and right that yes, they do help. Like the whole idea of like promotions versus inspiration. Apple never runs promotions mm-hmm. because you're so good at a movement. Yeah. Now, granted, it's a lot easier to start, you know, run promotions to get you there. And we run promotions because like the why is, you know, it's tough. Like it's, it's, it's not an easy thing and we're working on it. It's deep. It's super deep. Mm-hmm. And Apple nailed it with it. Mm-hmm. Microsoft did a pretty good job with it, but that's why you rely on, on promotions to, to get you there because unless you can properly get this thing across and Apple took forever, it took Apple. Um, I think they had after 25 years, they had like 16,000 employees and now they have like 200,000 employees ever since then. So it's that's like, crazy. it took so it. long to get there. 25 yeah. years is that inflection point. Yeah. And I, I know like the stat they used in the book was like six years, they're a billion dollar company. But the fact that it took them that 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 long to reach that many employees and like you feel like six uh, like a billion dollar company should have, you know, 100,000 employees already. Yeah. But, I mean, the fact they did it in six years was crazy. I, I think it was it was either 16. I think it was 16. It was either, like we, we saw the stats yesterday between them and Starbucks. I don't really remember the exact um, yeah. thing, but yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right. So wrapping all this up. Yeah. Scale of one to 10. What do you give this book? uh a seven okay obviously you can't use a seven okay yeah your rules uh i give it a nine okay i I liked it a lot and that's why i was kind of shocked when you said people were uh didn't like didn't like it and now as we're talking through it more i think it's because they may be be insecure about not knowing their why well i never thought about it from that standpoint because i i liked it because it made me think about my why Mm mm-hmm but I'm okay to admit that I didn't really have a, or I didn't have like a really deep why. I just kind of had a loose why out there. Mm-hmm. And I feel like a lot of people don't want to admit that they don't have a why because it's true. This whole, every, like from the first sentence, this guy was, you know, I'm with him, like mm-hmm. 100%. You should have your why. I'm like, yeah, that makes perfect sense. And then all the companies he was rattling off, like uh, Costco has no um, PR or advertising department, it's all word of mouth. And I'm like, that's funny because I've never seen a Costco commercial or anything. Ever. And I'm like, but they're one of the biggest, you know, uh, wholesale, like, people out there. Them, them and BJ's. So mm-hmm. I'm like, that's crazy. But, yeah, I like this book a lot. It made me think it's something I'll probably take with me for the rest of my life probably. And you're going to keep, like, now that you're, like, cognizant of it, it's like you've been awoken. And now yeah. it's like now you can start to think about this stuff of, like, well, why does that work? And why am I doing this? And what's driving me today? So I was up till 3 o'clock last night after I finished it, like, thinking about uh It's tough, man. Why. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, man. My because that, that's stop. everybody's like, you know, why are you put on earth? And it's like, uh, but it is. It's an uncomfortable <laughs> yeah. thing because otherwise you're just along for the ride. Mm-hmm. And this is why monks are so freaking happy, it seems like, because, like, they're just at one with themselves. Yeah. That, exactly it's like the people i look back at people i've met in my life and i'm like why is this guy so happy what does he got to yeah. do it's pouring rain out and it's like it's chick fil employees man that exactly they all know the why they all know the why of what they're doing and that's why it'll be 34 degrees mm-hmm. pouring rain and they're out there in an ipad like hello sir how are you today and i'm like bro you want to get in my car like yeah. <laughs> we can do this over here. yeah take a little bit yeah yeah it's incredible so guys out there you either, at this point, I'm going to say you either absolutely love this book and ate it up, or 
you probably hated it. Mm-hmm. And I really think it's one of those books that even if you hated it and you didn't like it, you probably got a lot out of it, or at least like it shows you. And eventually, it's one. Of, it's really one of those books that like when the student is ready, the teacher will arrive. Mm-hmm. So I feel like if you listen to this book and you didn't like it, and you you revisit it in like a year and a half, and you and you are more susceptible and more open to this stuff, and you really start in between now and then start to ask yourself why, it's a whole. It's a completely different book. Mm-hmm. What do you think of it? What would you give it? I thought it was a ten. I yeah. thought it was fantastic. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was it was really well done. It was a bit repetitive. Um, yeah. I get the whole Apple stuff. However, I've heard so much about this that like, I don't need somebody to give me specific examples of like, oh yeah, like in a marketing company, like I I can take like what the big dogs are doing just because I've done enough of it and go, okay, how is what Apple is doing applicable to me? Mm -hmm. Because I'm I'm open to it. Yeah. Which is a tough thing to do if you've never done it before because you're so in your own business. I'm like, well, that's great for Apple, but like, I, you know, yeah, we have, we, there's six employees. Like we don't have yeah. a billion, like it's completely different, but I'm, I don't know. Like I, I'm on a mission to, to do all that. So mm-hmm. it, it's helped. It helped me a lot. I yeah. liked it a lot. I definitely felt like the examples, I like how they were spread out each chapter. He kind of kept going back to the same companies, but after a while I'm waiting for him to be like, and this is how you do it. And it really didn't come until the end and then it's like kind of left hanging yeah so. and, I, and there's i think there's another book that's like it's called find your why yes that yeah. walks through that which would probably be a very good actionable one this is more of like a prequel to all that of like here's why it's important yeah so i i loved it um it's going to change how we do a lot of things like even with like the cop uh, content not content um copywriting stuff for like landing pages that we're doing like for csa for example like with tom's contractor fight stuff it's all let's bring respect back to the trades because that's like something that everybody can get around. But when we were like talking about the bridge, we were talking about, oh yeah, learn how to pre-qualify this and that. But now it's like, well, how can we bring respect back to the trades if we are dropping everything the first time that a homeowner asked us to come out and give them a bid? Mm -hmm. So what we're doing is the why and the mission behind everything that Tom is doing is really all about bringing respect back to the trades. But how does the CSA bridge fall under that because mm-hmm. otherwise just a sales program but as soon as we can go look this is this is how this directly impacts the why it's like oh mm-hmm. now i get it yeah. now you're, i'm part of the mission i'm part of the movement and that's what everybody wants and it, but it also makes sense because how can you bring respect back to the trades if somebody calls you up and goes hey i want to bid on my kitchen you go oh yeah i'm just hanging out with my family but i'll come on over there and you go over there you give them a bid your bid is four or five times higher than what they thought. And then they ghost you mm-hmm. like that's There's nothing respectable about that whatsoever. Mm-hmm. So to actually be able to like tie the two together, it, it, it helped me a lot and go, Oh, this makes sense. Yeah. Uh, it, and when you said that, it seems like the, once they found the why everything else made so much more sense, so much more sense. And it's the idea of the energy in all directions versus just one. Mm-hmm. Cool. So with all that being said, next book that we're doing February, it's a sick book. Uh, I've read it three times. <laughs> It's called Giftology by John Rulin, R-U-H-L-I-N. And this one is the opposite of Start With Why because it is all tangible. It is like the chapters, like I listed to it on on audio, and it'd be like chapter four, two paragraphs, chapter five. And it's like he he takes like all the information and boils it down and not into bullet points, but like it's short. Like Mm -hmm. the audio version, I think is like two, two and a half hours long. Oh, that's wow. That's not bad. Yeah. So quick one, this is something that, and the reason I'm doing the giftology one next is there's two reasons. One, I always talk about the giftology side of things or gifting in December when it's like the big time to do it. We've done it. We had a podcast. Right. And, yeah. we, and, and they always do well. Mm-hmm. Now with that, gifting is not something that you just do once a year and mm-hmm. go, okay, it's December. Let's get everybody a, a, you know, a fruit basket. It's something that you should always be doing and always be on the lookout for. So there's really no perfect time to do this because- Everybody does this stuff in December. Mm-hmm. What if you do this in other times throughout the year, which is what the book talks about? So it's more so a mindset than it is like a timing of the year thing. Yeah. And the other part is I'm interviewing the author of it to talk about this. Yeah. So this is when this pod comes comes out, it'll be the beginning, like the first Monday in February. When the first Monday in March comes out, it'll actually be with the author of Giftology, who's John Rulin, who's you know the master at all this gifting stuff so it'll be a good conversation between all i'm looking forward to interviewing him i've actually talked to him before oh that's cool uh, yeah i like called his company up just to like ask like a quick question about the gifting stuff and 
He oh, like, he's the guy who can, he answered. Yeah, he was like, hey, John. it was John. I was like, uh, hey, I'm looking for uh, so-and-so. I'm like, oh, yeah, one second. And then, like, I, like, realized, I was like, wait, hold on. Is this John Rulin? And they're like, yeah, it's John Rulin. I'm like, should you be answering your own phone? But, like, he just sounds like a super <laughs> down-to-earth dude. So, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so we'll be talking all about that, all about how to properly gift your clients so that way you keep them retained longer and longer and longer. Mm-hmm. So, cool. If you guys are uh, watching this on YouTube, do me a favor. Are we making them like or are we making them write something below? Uh, comment your favorite part of the book. Comment your why. Yeah, that'd be a big one. If you know your why, I know this is being vulnerable, comment your why below. If you're on iTunes or a podcast, somebody needs to find their why, shoot this over to them. It helps out a lot. Yeah, and if you're not part of the CGN Book Club, uh, ask to be on Facebook, CGN Badass Book Club. The only rule is you got to read the book mm-hmm. for the next month. Mm-hmm. Thanks, guys.